How's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Mr. Downey here again, taking a look at 17.6, Precipitation and Separation of Ions. So our objectives are to use the KSP to determine if and when a precipitate will form when different solutions are combined. Uh, that's it, I guess. thought there was... <laughs> that's, our, that's our objective. All right, vocabulary. The precipitate is the insoluble stuff that is going to fall to the bottom of the solution. So the precipitate is the stuff on the bottom. The solution is the stuff with... You know, the solute and the solvent mixed together. Um, so, yeah, those are the important vocab. Precipitate, uh, it's the solid stuff at the bottom. All right. Will there be a precipitate? In order to figure that out, you got to look at KSP versus Q. So, if this is our example, we have lead sulfate. That's going to dissolve into lead plus 2 ion and sulfate ion. KSP is going to be as follows. PB plus 2 times concentration of the sulfate ion. Minus, yep. So as in previous topics, Q is simply K expression with values plugged into it. If Q is greater than KSP, that tells us that we got too many products and we will shift to the left, which will make our solid, which is uh, precipitation occurs, make it more solid until Q is no longer greater than KSP. If Q is less than the KSP, we can dissolve more solid. We got an unsaturated solution. And if Q equals KSP, you are at equilibrium also known as having a saturated solution. So what's happening during precipitation? Well, the concentration of the ions is too high. So these ions are going to combine and precipitate out of solution. They're more likely to bump into each other and then precipitate as a solid, which will generally sink to the bottom. All right, so visualization. This is when Q equals KSP. Everything's dissolved. It's nice. It's pretty. But let's say we added more stuff, somehow tricked it into dissolving more of this stuff. Right now i got Q that's greater than the KSP. So what's going to happen is those ions are going to meet up and start precipitating out. They're going to collide with each other and they're going to precipitate out until the Q equals the KSP. Alright, so now that Q equals KSP, we have a saturated solution with precipitate at the bottom. We can use these differences in solubility to separate ions. So let's say I had a solution with a Cu plus 2 ion and Ag plus ion. Uh, and we wanted to separate them. Well, you also know that AgCl is only slightly soluble. This KSP is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 10. Whereas copper chloride is completely soluble. So if I add a little chloride ion, the AgCl will precipitate out. So I add some chloride ion. Maybe I add some... Sodium chloride, whatever, get the chloride ion in there. And when the chloride ion bumps into the silver ion, it's going to form a solid and it's going to precipitate out. So these chloride ions are going to find silver ions and they're going to hold on to them because they're not highly soluble. They're barely soluble. And then they're going to sink to the bottom and precipitate. Now you got a solution with just the copper ion in there. So let's do some math examples. Will a precipitate form when 0.1 liters of 0 0.0090 molar lead nitrate is added to 0.5 liters of 0 0.0050 molar sodium sulfate. And they give you the KSP of lead sulfate as 6.3 times 10 to the minus 7. So, chances are, maybe you'll get a precipitate with lead sulfate. we got to check. So we know the KSP expression for lead sulfate is PB plus 2 times sulfate ion concentration, right? So now we got to figure out, well, how many moles of lead do we have? So I take a look at the solutions that had the lead in it. I took 0.1 liters of 0 0.009 molar lead nitrate. So I do molarity times the volume, and I get 0 0.0090 moles of my lead. Do the same thing for the sulfate. So I take a look. I got sulfate from 0 0.0050 molar, uh, and I had 0.5 liters of it. So I times those together, I get 0 0.0025 moles of the sulfate ion. Notice I only get one sulfate ion and I only get one lead from each of these compounds. So now i got to take a look at my new volume because I need a new concentration. I took 0.1 liters, and I took 0.5 liters, and I mixed them together. So that tells me that I now have 0.6 liters. I don't know where my pen went. There we go. 0.6 liters is my new volume. So I can use that to get my uh, new concentrations. Molarity of lead, 
it's going to be the moles, 0 0.0090 moles divided by the new liters, and I get 0 0.0015 molar for my lead concentration. Do the same thing for the sulfate concentration. Take the moles of sulfate divided by liters of solution, and I get 0 0.00417 moles. So now i got to plug it in. Q is simply the KSP expression, right? It's simply this with these numbers plugged into it. So I plug those numbers in in the appropriate places, and I get 6.23 times 10 to the minus 6. Now I'm going to compare that to my KSP. Here Q is greater than the KSP, so that tells me I got too many products. I got too many ions. I got too many of where is these guys. So I'm going to have to get a precipitate to get some of them out. So precipitate will form. Another math problem. You have a solution that contains 0 0.01 molar silver plus one ion and 0 0.02 molar lead plus two ion. AgCl has a KSP of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 18, and lead chloride has KSP of 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. You want to separate the ion, so you start to add some chloride ion to the solution. What concentration of chloride ion is required to get each salt to begin to precipitate, and which will precipitate first? So to figure that out, you got to look at the KSP expression of each of them one at a time. So I'm going to look at silver chloride first. That's going to be my KSP expression. I rearrange, do some algebra to solve for chloride ion because that's my thing of interest. And I get KSP divided by molarity of Ag+. So I just plug those in and I get an answer of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 16. So this is a really small number. So I barely need any chloride ion to get silver chloride to precipitate. But let's see about lead. Lead chlorides, KSP is going to be as follows. Note the chloride ion is squared because I'm, it's PbCl2 breaks up into Pb plus 2 and 2 chloride ions, right? So i got to square the chloride ion concentration. So rearrange solve for chlorine. Um, notice that I had to take square root, which is the same thing as the exponent to the 1 half power. And now I just kind of plug in my numbers and I, you know, beep bop, beep bop, boop, them into my calculator and I get chloride ion concentration 0.29. So which one of these will precipitate first? Well, it's going to be this one because it's a smaller one. And as I'm adding chloride ion, I'm going to get this concentration first. Silver chloride will precipitate out first. So to summarize, you'll use KSP to determine if precipitate will form. By comparing Q versus KSP, if Q is greater than KSP, you get a precipitate. So differences in solubility can be used to separate ions in solution. And that is it. That is it. I know I said it, you know, had the that <sighs> raise in my tone at the end of the sentence, make it sound like I had more to say, but I don't. So that's it. Hope you found it helpful. See you in class. Goodbye.